why or what the issue is of why it's so dark in here. Hmm. Give me one second. And we'll see what we can find out. Let's see if that helps any. Eh, a little bit. Alrighty, um, this got some time to kill, and if you are a member of the NRA, you get some of uh, their publications. This one happens to be the American Hunter. But before I get into talking about the three-page, no, two-page article um, that they did with that rifle, I'm kind of curious if anybody has any hands-on experience with the uh, Spy Point XL 720 camera. Um, I did a, a test video with this thing down to the freezer with uh, the season's first deer. And the, the audio was actually shitty and horrible. Uh, video quality was actually pretty good considering I still had the uh, protective plastic, plastic coating over the lens. I still have it on the back, and the only reason why I have it on the back still is because this model here, even though it states um, in the advertisement, and I won't mention the store of where it was purchased from, said that it was a weatherproof casing. Well, it's not. This is like their entry model where there is no external camera that you can take out. Um, that version of the camera is 300 bucks, and if I'm dropping $300 on an action camera, I'm going to go with the GoPro, hands down. Um, 98 bucks, and it came with the scope mount. Couldn't beat it. However, the one thing I noticed about reviewing the video, and I'll probably shoot that up here um, in the next couple days, depending. Uh, it's going to be kind of a hellish week, and this coming weekend is the last weekend of the 2017 rifle season for Northern Tier. Um, I could hunt one more week up there um, after this coming weekend for late season archer and muzzleloader, but I'm not going to. I'm um, going to kind of just give give them a rest and let them be, and then see you know see what we got come you know come spring. And there's a lot of projects to get done on the property. To make more sense out of that, uh, the property it was last summer, uh, but this is the second season on it. Uh, it's two cabins on 175 acres in the Adirondacks. Um, people that are familiar with New York State or live in New York State more than likely have heard about the Adirondack Park. Um, so we are up there, and it's absolutely awesome. It's great for the spring and summertime because you've got a plethora uh, four-wheeling that you can do um, on property and other seasonal dirt roads, sandy roads, so on and so forth. You can actually drive 15 minutes from where we are into another town, and they actually have a old decommissioned um, gravel pit, gravel bed. I don't know the exact size of the acreage of it, uh, but that is set aside specifically for side-by-sides, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, whatever you want to take out there. Um, so that's that. But anyways, it's going to be a busy week, and hopefully I can punch my tag this weekend um, but the video that I got with this I was messing around with a little spike horn and was watching him come in from across the creek into the one food plot that we have we've got two cameras set up front to back so the one camera is watching the runway and then the other camera that would be facing towards me per se in the video is watching the food plot so he came across the creek while well, prior to going into the blind I had a uh, stick of Conquest 200 VS1. Been reading about it. I have used their Evercom scent, and that speaks for itself. I'm not going to give my own story. Um, was never really a believer until I've kind of started following Conquest, learning how they do things. Contrary to popular belief, it's not a high fence hunting ranch. They have no hunting on their property. It is strictly for the products that they sell as far as for the scents and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to go into that whole spiel. So I took the uh, the VS1 and I rubbed that on the back of the tree that had the one trail camera. And then about seven yards off to my right from the blind, 
There was two more, I don't know if you want to say sapling, poplar trees. They're about four inches around. But the way the sun was coming up and breaking over the trees, it was warming up the front of the tree. Anybody that uses scents knows if you can get it warm, keep it warm, that's going to help disperse the scent, especially with a wax-based product like the Conquest line of the scent sticks. So when he hopped the crick and he got a whiff of it and it was almost like I had a fishing pole with a lure on it and I tossed it out, hooked him, and I'm reeling into the blind. It got to the point where I knew I wasn't going to shoot the buck, but now I'm using my rifle <laughs> with this camera mounted on the scope as a monopod and to film the buck. So he gets probably about 15 yards away and I let out a to just get him to stop and hopefully just turn around and go about his business. I didn't want to get busted by him, uh, but as soon as I did my little flat at him, he flagged a little bit and trotted off, went back to where he came out across the creek, licked his branch, hopped back across the creek, went about his business. However, that brings me up to another issue with this camera. It's a 140 degree lens, okay? There's no zoom feature. On the $300 model, there is. But you can kind of see the angle, hopefully, of that lens glass. It's a concurved lens that's over the camera. But even the camera lens is very pronounced. It almost looks like an LED light. And that gives it a fishbowl effect. So even in that video, that deer looks like he's still 50, 60 yards out. And he was a lot closer than that. Um, also, in the video, it almost sounds like there was a helicopter that was flying overhead. Just a real low tone, bassy whooshing noise. Don't get it. I don't know if it's an issue with the camera or if that's just the quality that I'm expected to get from it because it was $98. That I don't know. So, any help would be, you know, appreciated on that front. I've looked at the videos on, you know, on here for it, and all the videos that I found are like four years old. And they look nothing like my spy point. So I don't know. Is what it is. Now, to end that point, this here is the article. And the lighting is absolute fucking dog shit. But anyway, this is the article covering the new Remington 700 American Wilderness Rifle, AWR. And the author goes on about how he took it to Alaska and put about 200 rounds through the rifle, yada, yada, yada. Okay, cool, fine, whatever. But then he goes on to state the custom rifle features in a working man's budget rifle. As far as the glass fiberglass, um, or excuse me, High-tech polymer, fiberglass reinforced stock, pillar bedding, the Cerakote finish on the barrel, the bolt, and the receiver, which makes it for all types of weather, and a 5R um, rifling, a button rifling. Button rifling is nothing new to Remington. Remington has always been a button rifled, rifled barrel, and you can find that in the 700 line, and you can find that in the Marlin line. It's all done in Illinois, New York. Button rifling has been a, a, a staple of how Remington does things. But I don't want to be wrong on the degrees, but normal rifling, or uh, not normal, uh, but a traditional rifling is normally done for the lands and the grooves at 90 degrees. And with the 5R rifling, that actually brings it if I can find it here. Da -da. Okay. So it's a conventional 90 degrees to a lesser 110 degrees. So essentially, say this is your land and this is your groove. All right. That's pretty much an you know, angle like that, a 90 degree angle. So your 110 would be, say, right about there. So it's less aggressive on surface contact with the bullet. And they say claims less following. Okay, I'll take their word for it. But the real kicker that I don't understand is they also bring up pillar bedding 
as a custom rifle feature. This here is a stock from a Remington 783, Model 783. Pillar bedding is generally all the same. It is pillar bedding. It all depends on how the stock is made around the pillars. And as you can see, hopefully, in this light, is absolutely freaking horrible. There's a pillar, and there's a slot for the recoil lock for the receiver, and there is the rear pillar for the rear of the receiver. However, I don't know if I can get that going. There we go. This pillar, the front half of the rear pillar, is exposed. There's no polymer reinforcement or anything from the stock of that pillar. The front pillar is completely encased, and that's right in front of where the magwell would come down because the 783 is a detachable box mag platform. I guess for the price of the rifle, you can't complain too much. It is a great stock for, say, a $200 rifle. The trigger that comes in the 783 isn't there a Mark X Pro, which the AWR does have. That's also the trigger that Remington's had the recall on. Big screw up. It literally, it was a five cent difference of what they had to fix to where they wouldn't have a particular issue. Not the one that the, the lawsuit's going against, but the issue of when you take that Mark X Pro trigger and you drop the draw weight on it, it can, with a little bit of, vi of vibration, so on and so forth, actually release the sear, striking the firing pin, striking the primer, and it's go time. The other shit, I don't want to hear about it. That's it is what it is. Bullshit. But we'll get back to the point where he had said it was a working man's price tag on the rifle. MSRP. Of this 700 is $1,150. Seriously? $1,150. That's the you know the working man's rifle. I, I can think of a lot better things than 700 <laughs> to drop 1150 on. Um, prime example, either Ruger's Precision Rifle or Savage Stealth uh, Gen 2. The 338 Lapua. It's only like $300 more. What do you do? For a hunting rifle, you look at, again, Savage. You have their uh, 10 110s in either wood or synthetic. You can get them in a range of any caliber. Plus, they work with Nikon, and you get a BDC 39x40 scope with the rings and the bases already mounted, say, 600 bucks. So we all know MSRP on a rifle, you're not going to get an MSRP. Certain privately owned Small businesses, small dealerships may sometimes be above MSRP compared to your big box stores. Um, say now, either Dick's Sporting Goods, which with Dick's, or with um, Bass Cabela Pro, if you want to call them that, since Bass Pro had bought out Cabela's. I understand you have Field and Stream, you have other well-known stores, but let's face it, as far as for a national level, Bass Pro is buying up the market, and they're taking over everything. So you're not going to see that gun at that price at a big box store. And normally at this point, I would redo this video. Fuck it. Hold on. The dog wants to come in. Alright, screw it. Real life's not edited, so why buy doing it on a Facebook Live video? Hi, puppy. You gonna jump up? Hold on. You gonna say to the camera? Come here. Come here. Up, up. Before people think I'm nuts. Come here. Duck. Duck. Come here. Up, up. Say hi to the kid. Oh, ho, 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 yes. There you are. Hi. Duck right there. Right there. Oh, what do you get? What do you get? 
<laughs> and that would be Atika, and he is my 160-pound giant Alaskan Malamute. He's awesome. And on certain days, he thinks he's a beagle. And on other days, he thinks he's a coon hound. And essentially, anything that's furry, feathery, and moves fast, he wants to eat it. <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, I guess that just kind of ends my gripe on the whole Remington issue. And... Yeah, I don't even go there. But, it is what it is. I think Remington really needs to restructure a lot of things that they're doing, including management, including the ownership of the company, who they have own it, who the stakeholders are, perhaps maybe even open up um, stock options to the company because the way that they're going, they're at their 200 and one year anniversary I believe it, it's either 201 or 202 years um, but they are America's oldest gun manufacturer they're also going to be the next one of America's arms manufacturers that goes under if they don't change their shit and change their ways and that's coming right from the bottom line production lines to production management to plant managers to the CEO which already stepped down but it needs to be overhauled. They need to have a better... This is the point where do you be politically correct? Fuck no, because I don't believe in that shit. A drug enforcement policy to where you are randomly drug tested the whole time that you work there. If you fail, your ass is out the fucking door. The union that they have there, in my opinion, should be dissolved, and they should have a machinist union in place, not a miners union. And I'm not trying to talk shit bad about unions or anything else, but it's odd to me that you're going to still have a union from day one, because Remington used to be in, in the smelting and mining, so on and so forth, for raw materials when it first got started. We've progressed way past that point. This is now 2017. I think... In order for Remington to survive, they have to do an overhaul. They have to invest in the company, get rid of all the old-ass machines that they're still running from the 1950s that just have issues every fucking day. It is what it is. So, with that being said, we're almost 20 minutes into this whole shit, and probably nobody really gives a left nut, but I had some time to kill on this Monday. The season premiere of Street Outlaws is on. Most people probably say that's fake and stupid, but I find it a little bit interesting. It is what it is. And TV sucks in general. So, until next time, and if I decide to get that video uploaded, you'll see what I'm talking about about the camera. And hopefully, this coming weekend will be the weekend I punch my tag. If I don't, it's been a great season. I couldn't ask for anything better, um, even though the big boys didn't show up in front of me. I still saw it passed on more deer that I think I've ever seen um, out of my last two decades of, of hunting. So, is what it is. I'm done. I'm out, and I'll catch you guys later.